Okay, now let's talk about what the pelvic floor muscles do. Why should we even care about them? Well, they're very important to our lives because they help with bladder function, they help with bowel function, they help with sexual function, and they help, uh, they're part of our core, so they help to control movement. Uh, so we're gonna go over four S's. The first one is support. So remember that pelvic bowl, the bones are the outside and the floor is the bottom. They're literally the pelvic floor muscles for a reason because they're the floor of the pelvis. So imagine this is your pelvic floor and you have organs that sit on top of that floor. So for female bodies, there's the bladder, there's the uterus and the rectum. And the pelvic floor is like a little miniature trampoline down there uh, to help support the organs. It gives and it comes back up. It gives and it comes back up. So it needs to have some tension and tone but also um, flexibility and coordination to give and come back up like a healthy trampoline, right? Number two is sphincteric. So imagine those canals. Remember we talked about the urethral canal where urine exits. Those pelvic floor muscles wrap around the canal to keep it closed to prevent urine from leaking. But when it's time to urinate, those muscles need to relax to allow the urine to come through and to pass through. And it's that same concept that applies to your rectum, to the bowels. So the pelvic floor muscles wrap around to prevent poop from leaking, to prevent gas from leaking. But when it's time to poop, the muscles need to relax to allow stuff to pass through. And then the same concept applies with the vaginal canal. So the muscles wrap around the outlet. So we want good tone and sensation with the pelvic floor muscles. We want strength and health there uh, because that does improve sexual function and that helps with vaginal laxity. But on the opposite side, so, so just imagine this, uh, if you had like vaginal laxity and the pelvic floor muscles weren't doing a very good job, then when you insert something, you're not going to have as good of sensation or tone, right? But on the flip side, if your muscles are really tight and overactive, then you try to insert something, it's going to be very difficult or impossible. It's likely to be painful and not a good experience. So the pelvic floor muscles are really powerful uh, controllers of those three outlets. The third function is sexual. And so we just kind of went over that with the vaginal canal, but they also help with, um, they help erect the clitoris in females. They are active during orgasm. So they automatically rhythmically contract. And then male bodies also have pelvic floor muscles and they wrap around the base of the penis. And those actually help with erections. Uh, people with erectile dysfunction or premature ejaculation, a lot of times will also have pelvic floor dysfunction. So that's the third S. And then the fourth S is stability. So your pelvic floor muscles are part of the core and they work with your other core muscles, like your deep abdominal muscles, your deep low back muscles, and the diaphragm to help control movement and um, help to eliminate pain. So if you have too much movement and not enough control, that can be painful. You can have joint popping, but then you can also have the reverse. So you need healthy pelvic floor muscles for that fourth S, which is stability. Now I'm going to show you a few infographics and also some animations that help to further illustrate these points. So when the pelvic floor muscles are working, here we have our four S's. So support, remember they're like that pelvic floor trampoline to engage and lift and support what's on top of it. Sphincteric, they close off that outlet. Here are the pelvic floor muscles. Here's the bladder. Here's the outlet where urine would exit. And those pelvic floor muscles help to keep that outlet closed. Sexual, so healthy muscle tension improves tone and sensation. And remember, they are active during uh, orgasm. And then stability, so they work with the other core muscles to control movement. You can see in this side view here, here are the pelvic floor muscles, here's the diaphragm, here are your deep abdominal muscles and your deep low back muscles. And you can see how they work together there.
Now, when they're resting, because remember, we don't, they're, the pelvic floor muscles are voluntaries, which means that they should do what we tell them to do. Uh, so we don't want them to be active and turned on all the time. So when they're resting, so the supportive function, they need to let go and relax when not upright. Sphincteric, we need to let go to allow pee and poop and gas to exit. Sexual, so let go or relax to allow pain-free penetration or insertion. And then stability, also to let go or relax during sleep. Now, here is an animation that I think is just really, I mean, it, this is a bit of an exaggeration, but it shows what the pelvic floor muscles are doing. So remember, here's the pubic bone, here's the tailbone. We're looking into the pelvis from below. Here's the anus. Here are the pelvic floor muscles that wrap around the anus. Here's the vagina, the vaginal opening there. And um, there's the urethral opening and the clitoris. All of these are pelvic floor muscles. So watch what happens when the pelvic floor muscles contract. The anus closes and relaxes, closes and relaxes. The vagina, the vaginal opening there, closes and relaxes, closes and relaxes. And then same thing with the urethra. Now let's look at another view. So now we have relaxation. So it's that same anatomy, but during relaxation, the anus actually softens and opens. The vaginal opening softens and opens. The urethra there softens and opens. Let's watch that one more time because you need to have both phases. If you just have one phase or the other phase, you're gonna have problems. You need the pelvic floor muscles to do both phases and you need them to do both phases at the right time. And of course, we're gonna talk more about that. So here we go, this is the coordination element. So you can see the contraction and the relaxation, the contraction and the relaxation. So what happens during relaxation? It could happen, you could have gas, you can have urine pass, you can have stool pass. Um, so that's a, that's a good example of coordination. Now we have the side view. So there's that pubic bone and the tailbone and this hammock of muscles. That's the bladder, that's the uterus, and that's the rectum. And so you can see, let's play it again. When the pelvic floor muscles contract, they squeeze those canals closed and they lift. When they relax, the canals open and it allows pee or poop to come out. So I hope that that was a helpful uh, illustration of what the pelvic floor muscles do. I do just wanna add one more element on here because you may be thinking, okay, when, my, when I'm sitting or when I'm lying down, I'm relaxed and I don't want pee or poop to come out at that time. And that's a totally valid point. The beautiful thing is that the pelvic floor muscles definitely are voluntary and they're part of the external sphincter complex for the urethra and also for the anus, okay? But you have internal sphincters as well and they're muscles and they're not voluntary. So those muscles also help to keep the outlets closed and open at the right times. You don't have control over those muscles. So don't, don't, don't stress about those muscles, but I just wanted to add that as a little element there um, because th that's certainly been a question in the past. Like, hey, if I'm lying down, I don't wanna just totally relax because then I'm gonna pee myself. No, you have internal sphincters that help to keep it closed too. All right, let's move on to the next lesson.